Hello everyone, Factory in today's video, have a look at whether next week's 10 days in today's video. Uh, we'll also have a look at CFSB2 for the next month. That takes us, uh, I think, just about to the start of November, actually, uh, with uh, that particular part of the update. So, uh, we'll have a look at whether next week's 10 days, first of all. But before I get on with that, uh, we're going to start off by having a look at the uh, temperature in the stratosphere over the uh, North Pole. I haven't spoken about this yet so far this season, but we will be keeping an eye on this uh, chart. This is from the JMA, uh, Japanese Meteorological Agency uh, website. This is the temperature at 30 HPA, uh, and it's going to cover the full uh, sort of autumn and winter season. So, this grey line here is the uh, temperature trend at 30 HPA, which is one of the top levels of the atmosphere in the stratosphere over the North Pole. Um, the grey line is kind of like the trend uh, line for what temperatures are expected to do in the stratosphere over the North Pole at this point in the year. So you see, we've got the dates on the side of the chart of the temperature, uh, temperatures are on the side. You see that we are very much in a cooling time of year at the moment. We begin in September uh, there, and by the time you get through to the end of the year into January, have uh, generally a very cold stratospheric temperature yeah, over the uh, North Pole in the top layer of the atmosphere. So we bottom out somewhere around Christmas, and then after that we generally see, uh, on average, temperatures starting to lift up through the first part of the year until eventually we reach our warmest time of the year in the stratosphere over the North Pole, which happens in the summer months, Ju uh, June, July, uh, around there. And then, of course, we begin to cool down again as we go through towards August. So that's what's expected to happen. Uh, and this black line here is the temperature in the stratosphere at 30 HPA uh, at this particular season. So we can go to right where we are now, into the very beginning of October, and at the moment, the temperature in the stratosphere over the North Pole is actually around average. It's a little bit colder than average, but not a big deviation at all. It's very close to this grey line, so a couple of degrees colder than average, perhaps. But overall, not deviating all that far from where you'd expect the stratospheric temperature at 30 HPA to be at this time of the year. Now, we're going to keep an eye on this black line because if when we get into the winter months, we uh, send the black line down to here somewhere, we'll have a really cold stratosphere. When that happens, of course, a cold stratospheric temperature over North Pole is associated with an increase of the polar vortex. And uh, when you get an increase of the polar vortex, you get stronger westerlies. You bottle all the cold air up in the high latitudes over the Arctic. And uh, the contrast between that and the warm temperatures in the tropics uh, produce strength and westerlies through the mid latitudes, and particularly through the Atlantic and into Europe. So essentially, when you have a cold stratospheric temperature at 30 HPA over North Pole, you'll tend to have increased westerlies, and so consequently a cold stratosphere over North Pole, maybe it's a bit perverse, but a cold stratosphere over North Pole will actually be associated with milder conditions through the UK and through Europe as well. Sometimes, though, you can get a stratospheric warming, uh, and that can see the black line lifting up to sort of that kind of level. And when you get that, you can start to reduce the western is a little bit, and uh, they won't be quite as strong. Sometimes as well, you'll get a sudden stratospheric warming, and when that happens, the black line will shoot up to that sort of level within around two or three days. They're very, very dramatic on these charts. They always look <laughs> very dramatic indeed. When you get a sudden stratospheric warming, you'll lift the black line virtually off the chart, and this can be associated with blocking, with northern blocking. Blocking. And northern blocking is a route to pushing cold air out of the Arctic down into the mid latitudes. So a sudden stratospheric warming often takes around two or three weeks to filter down into the troposphere, which is the boundary layer of the atmosphere where weather is taking place. But a sudden stratospheric warming uh, around two to four weeks after it can be associated with blocking and therefore with cold conditions. The trick is always where that blocking is sitting, so it's not a guarantee. Don't you think? Sometimes you can get a sudden stratospheric warming, you get the blocking, but it doesn't sit in the right place to deliver cold weather to us. It might deliver it into America or into Asia. But in any case, we will be keeping an eye 
on that chart over the coming weeks and months to see what the temperature in the stratosphere over North Pole is doing. We'll also be looking at uh, this chart as well. It's very similar, same idea. It's just looking at a, a high, slightly higher level uh, in the stratosphere over North Pole. This at 10 HPA. So we'll be keeping an eye on those two charts over coming weeks and months. See whether we get a cold stratosphere. See whether, in fact, we get a sudden uh, stratospheric warming. So uh, they'll be featuring a lot in the videos over next week, uh, over next few weeks and months. Right, let's have a look at the GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles then for the next couple of weeks. We're looking at Carlisle uh, today. So the red line here is a 30-year upper air temperature average for Carlisle. Actually, a little bit cooler than average at the moment. Uh, but we're going to see those temperatures stage a bit of a recovery at the end of weekend into weekend. Although not really deviating all that far from the 30-year temperature average, to be honest. Once we get through to the end of the week... And the weekend, we are hovering very close to that red line to the 30-year uh, temperature average in Carlisle. So in terms of the upper air temperatures, not particularly uh, warm or cold either way. Although, as I say, we are starting off a little bit on the cooler side just at the moment. Uh, for uh, precipitation, so we have got some rainfall spikes coming through in the uh, next week. Not all that many of them. Bear in mind, this is for Carlisle, so it's up in Cumbria. It's one of the more wetter places of the country uh, uh, exposed to winds off the uh, Irish Sea and the Atlantic. So uh, what we see here is that we have got some precipitation coming through. You wouldn't say that's particularly wet. Later on, though, we talked about this in the video uh, yesterday, we have got more in way of precipitation spikes appearing through the second week of the month. So we may go into wetter phase in the second week of October. These are the surface temperature ensembles and air pressure ensembles for uh, Carlisle, just dealing with the, uh, let's deal with the um, surface temperatures first of all. So uh, 15 degrees is just there, 10 degrees is just there. See, it's quite chilly at the moment. We're barely getting above uh, 10 Celsius, up to around 12 or 13 degrees perhaps, and some quite cold nights coming up as well through to the end of the week. After that, bit of a recovery in the temperatures taking place, going back close to 15 degrees Celsius for a while over weekend and uh, into next week as well. But then it goes through towards the middle part of the month. Remember, this is right at the extended range of the Mars. So it's in the unreliable time frame. But right at the extended range, perhaps a bit of a cooling trend appearing again uh, at Carlisle uh, as we begin to drop back towards 10 degrees Celsius. And we may start getting some colder nights coming through then as well, getting perilously close to freezing by the middle part of the month with these ensembles. But do bear in mind, that is at the very extended range, and it is uh, unreliable. In terms of air pressure, so uh, this is where we're starting off at with the air pressure at Carlisle, around 1,020 millibars, a bit of a reduction in pressure taking place uh, there around Thursday, Wednesday into Thursday. And then after that, so uh, a bit up and down, really, a bit higher there, a bit of a ridge coming through, then a bit lower, then a bit higher. Then maybe a general trend down in pressure through this second week of a month, which may turn rather more unsettled. So I think it's still got that idea that, uh, yes, there will be some rain in Carlisle over next week. Otherwise, many eastern and southern parts of the country like to be pretty dry, I would have thought, over the uh, next week. And then as we go through into sort of the second week of October, possibly turning more unsettled once again. Temperature anomalies from the 3rd through to the 11th of October are coming out very close to average, no real deviation and in terms of precipitation anomalies from the third through to the eleventh generally it's drier than average it's close to average in the northwest and that does include Carlisle of course but many parts particularly England and Wales and eastern Scotland too coming out on the drier than average side these may trend more unsettled over the coming days Let's have a look at the GFS then for uh, Saturday. So a bit of a north-south split. We've got a ridge into the south, got low pressure into the north. So there will be showers going through to northern parts of the country on Saturday. Southern areas probably having a lot of dry weather. Sunday and into Monday, we build a ridge through the country. So that brings a fair amount of settled weather, I would have thought, uh, at the end of the weekend and into next week. That lasts through to Tuesday. Then later next week, maybe turning a little bit more generally unsettled. So particularly from the north and west, but I don't get through to Thursday, Thursday 12th of October, it is looking properly unsettled then with cloud and outbreaks of rain coming through. For the south, it's actually still looking reasonably dry close to that ridge. That's how we finish up at day on day 10 
uh, which is uh, Friday the 13th of October. And it looks as though unsettled conditions are gradually extending southwards and eastwards. And that continues really in towards the middle part of the month. We go through to the E70 there. That's how things are looking on Saturday with a little bit of a ridge um, across the southern part of the country anyway, although northern areas are looking more unsettled over the weekend. And then through to next week, we build something of a ridge through the country in the early part of the week, so it should be a reasonable amount of uh, dry weather. And very different, really, with the East NUF actually beyond that into the extended range. We uh, start to build up this high pressure up over Scandinavia, so that's bringing a lot of dry weather through the second half of next week, and turning winds into the southeast as well. Now, these winds are going to be quite interesting if they come off, because they might be dragging up some quite warm air from France, but equally they could be bringing in some quite chilly air from uh, further east in Europe. So October is always a funny, uh, a funny time of year to get easterly winds or southeasterly winds, and it depends very, very much on the exactly where the air is being sourced from. If we get this sort of chart in November, this is probably quite a cold chart. But um, in October, it can be chilly. That sort of chart. Sometimes if the air is being sourced from quite a way south, and this does look like the air is being sourced from quite a way south, actually. It looks like the air is coming up from the central bowl of the Mediterranean to some degree. So you'd expect that probably to be reasonably uh, warm, or let's say not overly cold, I would have thought, uh, anyway. But it is very different at day 10 to what the uh, GFS is doing. I remind you of the GFS chart for day 10. That's how GFS is looking for Friday the 13th of October. East and F looking very, very different uh, indeed. So a really big split there between the two models in the way they're developing things through the course of next week. Essentially, more runs needed. Finally, just have a look at the uh, CFS V2 for the next month. Now, bear in mind that if things are... Uh, really uncertain in just a week to 10 days away, then obviously they're going to be even more uncertain when you're talking about a month away. But this is how the CFS this morning is looking. It's just a snapshot. It's actually looking this morning in terms of 500 mm of our heights broken down into week. It's the first week period taking us from the 3rd through to the 9th of uh, October. Placing a ridge through the Atlantic. Wait a minute, let's just get rid of that. So it's placing a ridge through the Atlantic there. And it's sending it up to the north as well. And then we've got the trough in over Scandinavia. Very complicated looking pattern, but we're essentially doing something like that. Flow and with projection. A reasonable amount of dry weather. We blocked off the Atlantic, so it won't be overly unsettled. This does look properly unsettled, though. This is the 10th through to the 16th of October. That ridge pulls further back into the uh, western portion of the Atlantic. We had a quite a big area of below average heights to the north of Scotland. And we do something like that with the flow and with the jet stream as well. So that looks really quite unsettled as we go through to the middle part of October. That's the second week of the month. Probably backed up, you would say, by the GFS ensembles. Although, bear in mind, the e have looks very, very, very different to that as we go through to the 7 to 10 day time frame. Then we go through to week 3 which is the 17th to 23rd of October and we get uh, above average heights to our south, below average heights to the north also got a ridge in over Scandinavia so that's quite complicated uh, we do something like that with the flow, with the jet stream, I would have thought that's still reasonably unsettled, not as unsettled as week two, but it is still quite unsettled and fairly mildish as well with the winds coming in from off the Atlantic. And then we go through to week four, which is the 24th to the 30th of October. We don't quite get to November yet with these charts. And this all looks rather strange. So we've got an area of above average heights to the south of Greenland, extending through the middle of the Atlantic. Uh, and we have got a ridge over here as well. And then not much else going on. You would have thought there's probably going to be a trough uh, but it's not really picking up on yet. But you'd have thought, looking at that, it's probably a trough just there. So that could be ending October on quite an unsettled and fairly cool note. Do keep in mind, as I explained, if it's uncertain, and it is uncertain, clearly between the GFS and the ECMDF, so if it's uncertain the sort of the 7 to 10 day time frame, then it's going to be very uncertain when you're talking about weather four weeks out. So that's just a bit of fun snapshot for what model is showing 
uh, today. Let's come back to the uh, reliable time frame, or what should be the reliable time frame. Sum it all up. So, um, there's going to be some showery bursts of rain around in the next few days, particularly in the northwest. We're going to the south and east, always getting the driest of the weather. Get through to the weekend as well. Next week, I think a reasonable amount of dry weather, probably quite mild as well by early next week, especially so in the south. And then later next week, that's when the uncertainty is coming in. Will it turn increasingly unsettled, as the GFS wants to do through this second week of October? Or will we build a ridge over and to the east of the country and bring in some east to south easy winds and keep it mostly dry? Have to keep you posted on that. Right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.